Well, as always, we've got a lot happening in the creative AI space, like updates galore, including one from Mystic by Magnific. I've got some thoughts on this one. Plus, we've got some new video generators and updates to, I don't want to call them older ones, but, you know, uh, established ones. Plus, we've got a full-on AI versus human screenwriter. Uh, can you tell the difference? Well, only you can decide. Okay, let's dive in. So first up, we have an update to Mystic, which is the image generator built into Magnific, which was kind of one of the first like OG creative image upscalers. There are, of course, a number of creative image upscalers at this point. They're all great. They all kind of do different things. I will say that I do tend to circle back a lot to Magnific. Uh, there's like a little bit of extra seasoning in there. Uh, I don't know if it's cilantro. I believe it's cilantro because some people either love it or hate it. By the way, the cilantro thing, apparently that's because of the gene OR6A2, which if you have it, uh, cilantro tastes like soap. If you don't, it just tastes like cilantro. See, we learned stuff here. All right, going back to AI image generation, uh, Mystic is now at version 2.5 and they've added a new model in here called Flexible. So of course, taking our good old standard, a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city sidewalk. If you missed previous videos, I've now changed it to sidewalk because our guy I kept getting jaywalking tickets. Uh, so running that in the flexible model with creative detailing at around 38%, this is something I'm gonna go into in just a little bit. We hit the generate button and so first generation, no cherry picking, we end up with this, which is fascinating. It's the first time that I've seen uh, our man in the blue business suit, definitely circa 2020. But yeah, zooming in on it, I think that this is where you see kind of Magnific doing its thing. Because uh, this is generating at 2K, you can actually take it up to 4K. But yeah, you can really get in there. Uh, and the image holds together pretty well. Now there is like a little possible bit of eye wonk there. I'm not going to actually dock that only because I, you know, I feel that that still falls within the range of like adult eye misalignment, or maybe it's just, you know, a shutter taken at a really bad moment. We've all had those photos of us. But overall, our depth of field looks really great here, uh, you know, sharp on our subject and everything sort of in on his plane of focus and then a nice fall off to the background. Really scrutinizing and punching in. I mean, hands actually look pretty good for AI generated hands. Um, you know, the thumb there looks a little bit on the elongated side, definitely needs to see his manicurist at some point or another. And uh, the watch is definitely not the Rolex that street vendor sold him on. A couple of other quick tests with our man in the blue business suit. Here he is at his most prototypical self. Another quick version of him in 16.9, uh, no complaints here. Yeah, uh, looks pretty solid. And just to break things up a little bit, we are introducing a new character, the woman in the red dress walking along the beach at sunset. She is actually the ex-wife of the man in the blue business suit. She left him, yep, you guessed it, because of all those jaywalking tickets. Overall, I do think that she looks pretty good. There's some nice like film grain happening here. I don't know how much that's coming through. Uh, given the YouTube compression. Skin tones uh, all look pretty good as well. Uh, overall, the image is very nicely composed. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a great shot. In terms of creativity and imagination, Mystic 2.5, yeah, it's looking pretty good. The prompt here is an ancient female warrior in armor holding a sword, surrealism, realistic, hyper detailed. Now I did run this one in 21.9 to give it that sort of like ultra widescreen look. And, uh, you know, it ended up taking up that space and kind of creating like this, you know, sort of like ultra long Elden Ring style sword. Uh, definitely leans into the surrealism side. I like it though. Um, yeah, I think that this image looks pretty compelling uh, and pretty cool. Well, here's some zombies in a mall. This is a group of zombies shambling through a mall in 1984. Uh, yeah, definitely has that sort of like Romero, Dawn of the Dead kind of vibe going on. Uh, solid, uh, would watch this movie. So there are three different models within Mystic 2.5. We've been looking at Flexible, which is uh, the latest one, uh, but there's also Zen, which is for smoother, basic and cleaner results and Realism, which obviously is for realism. There's also a creative detailing slider down here that can go obviously up to hundred and down to zero. Uh, we'll take a look at that in one second, but circling back to the models, I provided Mystic with a prompt, uh, pretty much inspired by the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. That's mostly because I just watched the three hour long director's cut of Dr. Sleep. If you haven't seen that movie, it is pretty good. So starting with the Zen model, uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good. There might be some inconsistencies in terms of the reflective light, I'm not sure, or maybe they're ghosts. But I do have to say, generating at 4K, I mean, you can punch in and get some pretty uh, remarkable details 
here. I mean, fairly minimalist in terms of interior design stuff, but you know, overall it looks pretty good. Uh, really nice touch with the outdoors here as well. Although I don't think that the actual Overlook Hotel had recessed lighting and uh, like central AC and or heat. Here's the same image with the realistic model, uh, very much compositionally in line with the previous image, uh, but definitely has much more of an Overlook uh, Hotel kind of vibe going on to it. Although, you know, if they were real fans, they would know that that room should be 237. Really nice haze effect with the light coming through the windows here, but our image does break down a bit with uh, our overhead lights. This just kind of end up a mess. And then finally running it in the flexible model, uh, we get kind of a creative solution to the problems in the previous two models just by kind of bathing everything in shadow. Although we do end up with like this weird smoke down here, there, there are ghosts here. Creative detailing definitely works as you would expect it to, but it's interesting when you start kind of playing around with the sliders in conjunction with different models. Uh, for example, cranking up the creative detailing to 74 and using the flexible model with our previous uh, woman in armor, we end up with this image, which uh, yeah, I mean, dynamic looks pretty cool. By taking creative detailing all the way down to say 12% and using the Zen model, which is meant for you know simplified images, uh, we end up with this, which you know I don't want to necessarily say that there's anything wrong with. This is kind of what we asked for. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, maybe something of a little less of a busy scene that looks a little more on the realistic side, you could go with something like Zen at a creative detailing of 65%. Whereas if you want to get a little more stylized with it, you could use the flexible model and crank up the creative detailing up to 100 and end up with images like this. Now, as to the question that I've seen popping around, is it flux under the hood of Mystic? And you know, I tend to think, yeah, it probably is. Take for example, this image that I generated in Flux 1.1. Uh, this is our cyberpunk woman with long white hair walking down a snowy city alley and compare that to the same prompt run over with Mystic 2.5. Uh, and to note, actually the three figures in the background, don't dock them. That was actually in the prompt as well. Uh, but overall, you know, the character model looks uh, very similar and that's okay because there are differences. So yeah, sure, at its base, you know, Mystic might be flux, uh, but I think that from there it goes through the magnific pipeline before it ends up generating out your final output. So, and again, there are, you know, three models here and it does generate at two to 4K. So you're kind of buying an upscale in along with it. And just a caveat at the end, again, that is speculation on my part. I do not know if uh, Mystic 2.5 is is really truly flux. I just want to throw that out there. So ultimately is Magnific 2.5 going to be my main image generator? No, it is probably not, but it is a nice and welcome addition to the Magnific platform as I do end up here a lot doing creative upscale. Moving on, Pixiverse has updated to a V3 of their model. Uh, I got to spend a little more time with this. It definitely is very capable. For example, here we have this image to video tracking shot of this, I, I don't know, I presume she's like an Instagram influencer debating whether eating that ice cream cone is going to be worth the 72 minutes of Pilates she has to do afterwards. Here we have text to video, raindrops dropping on a window. You can hear the lo-fi track in the background. And here we have another image to video of, uh, it's kind of a cool action tracking shot of this, you know, samurai running to camera. Yeah, there are some problems here, but overall I like the dynamic mood Movement. Now, I do bring all of that up because my results, they were a little bit on the mixed side. So with V3, obviously we have the ability to do image to video. Uh, they do throw in a number of effects kind of in that, I guess like sort of like Pika-ish style. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of like Squish It and uh, Lego Blast and those sorts of things. So uh, they're there if you wanna play with them. Additionally, there are three different stylization passes that you can uh, use for your generations, including anime, 3D animation, and claymation. Durations run between five and eight seconds. You can also either generate in HD or SD, although if you're generating in HD, I think it still requires an upscale. All of your standard aspect ratios, obviously, and they do have a new mode called performance that's coming soon, as well as the character function. So my first role was our cyberpunk woman in an alley. Uh, I had it prompt for her to continue walking and lead them into a trap. Uh, we kind of got it, I guess. There is a bit of like wonk and morph right here. I do think that her like facial characteristics change just a bit on 
on that turn as well. Um, but overall, not necessarily terrible. I did run it through an upscale in the hopes that we would kind of lose that ghosting uh, frame or two, but no, as it turns out, we just ended up with upscaled versions of that ghosting. Switching over to text to video, uh, this was kind of like a sci-fi street shot um, called out with a few things like IMAX and Sony A7. What's interesting is that they threw some like chromatic aberration on here as well. Uh, overall, not necessarily thrilled with the aesthetic of it, but uh, I will say that the camera movement is pretty nice. And overall, I'll say that Pixiverse definitely does do a lot of really interesting camera stuff. Uh, this was a really long prompt that I used in Minimax at one point or another, kind of a Western thing. But I, I really do like, you know, the two guys walking to frame and then, uh, you know, the appearance of, uh, I guess, like, you know, rugged Tom Selleck coming in there. That it's It's definitely a cool shot. There's just like this lack of temporal coherence in terms of style. Uh, you know, we begin uh, on that opening frame with something that looks realistic and end, you know, with kind of our cartoonish face coming in. Likewise, when I tried the same prompt out with the 3D animation preset, uh, we ended up with this where, you know, obviously we begin with sort of a very like 3D uh, CGI look and then end with something that kind of looks like a, a nightmare version of, did you guys ever see the music video to Primus's when owner has got a big brown beaver? If not, please go watch it immediately because it's, I mean, it's Primus and Primus sucks. Now that said, you can get some cool results out of it. Like uh, this is a prompt that I like to run with, uh, it's like, like Scarlett Johansson as Aloy from the game Horizon Zero Dawn. Granted, she comes off a little more like Lindsay Lohan in those opening frames. Uh, and again, there is some like kind of morph and coherence issues here and there. But for the most part, I actually think that this is a super solid shot. But taking that same prompt structure and applying it to, say, like a gangster film, uh, we end up with this, which, I mean, it isn't necessarily bad. I, I don't think that anyone's going to mistake this for like a Tarantino movie or a Scorsese movie. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it just kind of I love this guy in the back that's like whispering into this guy's ear, like, shoot him, shoot him more. So it's definitely a bit on the hit or miss side right now. But again, I'm giving them leeway since it is pretty early into this V3 model. And I do think that actually there are some really interesting things in here. For example, the movement on this image to video, starting with, you know, the image that we generated over in Mystic, um, you know, it, the character definitely changes quite a bit and then sort of like moth wings appear, but the movement is actually really pretty impressive here. And prompt wise, it definitely does follow directions. Uh, again, one of my old favorite Experiments here is to take one of the most famous shots in cinematic history and then you know use that as an image input and see what happens. So the prompt here is just uh, a van pulls up and a man walks in. He kind of turns into like, I don't know, like a, like a BBC reporter from the 1960s and then gets abducted by these people in a white van. So, uh, you yeah, know, kind of works. I don't think that Christopher Nolan is worried that AI is coming for his job, but I think that effectively proves he, he really need not be. So I'll be keeping an eye on picks first. It definitely is a capable model. Once again, I mean, uh, Elsini here managed to pull this off with the lip sync function. Shikoba gets these kind of cool driving shots off with it as well. Pixverse definitely does a pretty good job with like driving and motion footage. Jared Liu gives us an example of, you know, some of that motion. Uh, maybe that guy running on the beach was, you know, running to our lady in the red dress earlier. Um, yeah, nice car motion here. And hey, look, it's our uh, raindrops on a window. So yeah, really great work here, Jared. Definitely showcasing that, you know, again, picks first does have its strengths. I'll definitely be circling back to picks first to see how things are coming along. Uh, in the meantime, I definitely, I do urge you to go check it out. You might just need a number of re-rolls or to figure out, you know, a good prompt structure for it. If you have any tips, please leave them down below. Another new video model that came on my radar because uh, someone was kind enough to send it in to me is from Seller Pick. I know the website is not anything that you would think like, oh, there's a great video model here. But yeah, it wasn't until jumping into the Discord that I was actually kind of impressed. So from Roro Truck, you know, pretty solid, you know, guy putting on sunglasses, uh, looks pretty decent. Wolfie gives us this shot. I have to think that this is like a phone photo um, that was then prompted, but yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Another one from the Wolfie collection. It gets a little sloppy towards the end, but uh, overall, yeah, not a bad generation here. But my favorite by far is Joy Sekiro's uh, output of, well, YouTube's own Matt Vid Pro. Uh, yeah, check this out. This is pretty uh, wild. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Uh, 
the fact that it stays consistent with Matt's face and even gives a reaction as he gets hit from behind. Now, granted, the giant truck as it rolls through his back wall uh, seems to repair the back wall, but still, uh, it's pretty it's pretty good. So if you want to give it a shot, the you know uh, free plan is not very much. It's only 20 credits and each generation costs 10 credits. So uh, you're not going to get a whole lot out of it. I did take this image and gave it the prompt uh, image rotates as the woman looks at the camera. And we ended up with this, which uh, it's not bad. Uh, there's definitely coherence problems as she you know comes around in that loop. But for the most part, she stays relatively consistent as a character all the way through a 360. I'll tell you what, let me burn the final of my trial credits here uh, on our woman in the red dress. So I'm going to prompt a woman walking on a beach at sunset. She turns and smiles warmly. Will it generate and see what we get? No cherry picking. So power of editing, uh, I would say total time there was about three minutes, but follow the prompt. Uh, she definitely turns and smiles warmly at the camera. Uh, what's interesting about this generation too is the fact that, you know, there's no information about, you know, essentially who she is in that initial output. So uh, this character was completely created by the model. But yeah, overall, it looks like uh, consistency is pretty on point here. So is it the new Mini Max? I mean, I don't know. It's far too early to say here, but if you want to run two free generations to give it a shot, uh, the link to seller pick is down below. Rounding out AI human screenwriting Thunderdome. Two enter, one leaves. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. The uh, website, No Film School, or should I say specifically uh, Jason Hellerman, a writer at No Film School, uh, took, I guess, a kind of ire with uh, a tweet from medium Matt Allen. Matt is obviously a pro AI centric filmmaker uh, who did tweet an article about the you know end of an era, how AI will slash agency lit departments by 50%. Jason responding, uh, this doesn't seem remotely possible with the current tools. Uh, he's seen so far. Uh, and this ended up becoming essentially a Pepsi challenge uh, between the two. So the gauntlet thrown was that Jason, the human writer, would have one week to generate 10 script pages, while Matt and his writing partner, Krista, uh, would have a couple of hours to generate up the same amount of pages. To even the playing field, uh, Google Gemini was utilized to create a log line. That log line is a burnt out bodyguard and a naive fame obsessed pop star must team up to take down a ruthless crime syndicate after accidentally witnessing a murder, leading to a series of chaotic mishaps and unlikely friendships. To be honest, it's a pretty bland log line. In fact, actually just swap a couple of things out in that and you essentially have the fall guy from last year, which I, you know, I didn't hate that movie, but again, it was completely forgettable. So anyhow, Matt and Krista ended up handing in their AI generated script within about two hours and 30 minutes, whereas Jason uh, took you know his full week. He wrote 10 pages and then he rewrote 10 pages. Now, which one is which? Well, that's where you come in. Uh, both script A and script B are linked down below on a Dropbox link. Uh, you know, give them a read. See if you can tell which one is the AI generated one. And even more so than that, which one you prefer. I do think that you'll be surprised at, well, depending on which script you read first, uh, how difficult it might be initially at least to parse out which one was written by a human and which one was written by a bot. I did talk to Matt about it. Tools wise, he did use ChatGPT voice for about five to 10 minutes. Uh, that was then taken over to Claude 3.5 and then ChatGPT canvas in order to finalize the AI version of the script. Again, you can check out both scripts linked down below. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you can tell which one's human and which one was written by a bot. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.